everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will be learning class 9, chapter 1, Matter in our Surrounding. Presentation made by me. Let us understand what is matter. So matter is something that occupies mass and it has volume. Now, uh, what do you mean by mass and what do you mean by volume? So mass means it occupies space and it has volume means we can uh, you know, uh, you might know the uh, meaning of word volume. It is three dimensional, some height, weight, and width. So it is having volume that uh, it can contain several things. Volume, right? So matter is that occupied space as well as it has volume. So what are the examples of matter? So each and everything which you look around, like PC, cube, pen, pencil, switchboard color everything it is mass why because we know that it is it is occupying space the si unit of mass is kilograms that is kg matter is made up of several thousand particles particles in the sense atoms uh, the fourth line matter is extremely small it actually should be particles are extremely small Sorry for that inconvenience. Okay, so particles are extremely small in size. Now types of matters. The matters, the matter is classified based on two types. First one, physical properties of matter and chemical properties of matter. So what are the physical properties of matter? The physical property is characteristic that can be determined without changing the chemical identity of a substance. For example, this is the substance I'm holding. So if I shuffle this cube or if I randomly do anything, will the length of cube change? No. Color? No. Color won't change. Even the density, mass, elasticity, pressure, volume and luster. It won't change. Though I throw this or I did anything with this. I crumble it, crush it, throw this, break this. These physical properties are not going to change anymore. Okay, now what are the chemical properties of matter? First, oxidation states. If you are having any metal thing with you, let's say... Uh, Right now, I'm not having any metal with me. But yeah, if you're having any metal with you, so it will, ox uh, by the process of oxidization, you will be able to change it, its chemical properties. Chemical bonding is changed by mixing various chemicals, coordination numbers, heat of combustion, toxicity, flammability, corrosivity, and reactivity. You will be learning this in another video sorry in another chapter you will be learning chemical properties in another chapter let's focus on the physical properties in this first chapter so characteristics of particles first particles of matter are very very small particles of matter attract each other particles of matter are continuously moving and particles of matter have space between them. What does this mean? So characteristics of matter means the properties of particles. Because matter is made up of particles, right? That's why. So particles of matter are very, very small. As I mentioned, um, the particles of matter are very small. Similarly, uh, we know atoms. We know about the structure of atoms. So, the structure of atom in this particular object will remain same. And also, the particles which are there, they are very small. In any object, if you see, the particles are always small that we cannot even see it with the microscope. Second property is, particles of matter attract each other. Particles of matter attract each other? What does it mean? It means, for example, if you are having solid liquid and gas with you. So we know that the solid, liquid and gas, they are all having particles. The particles of solid are tightly packed because they are having much force of 
attraction as compared to liquid and gases. Liquids are having much more attraction force than gases. And gas is not having force of attraction at all because the particles of gas are randomly moving. Next, particles of matter are continuously moving. Now, if I say the particles of matter are continuously meaning, what does it mean? It means, like if you see this solid, we know the molecules are extremely tightly packed, that they can't even move. But how can I say they move? They are actually moving. Though they are having very little space, they move or they they, the capacity of moving is negligible. Means they are moving but we are not understanding. Because they are moving so slowly that their amplitude is extremely low. But they are moving actually. In solid also the particles move. Liquids we know like particles are moving. They are having space between them. So if I should give my hand over there right. But no, why? Because they have space, but very little space. They are moving, but very slow and low movement. In liquid, I can easily dip my hand because they are having less attraction force and uh, the particles are continuously moving, as we know. And also, the molecular space is moderate. And in gas, we can do anything randomly because all the two, three, four characteristics vary from solid liquid and gases now states of matter we know about the states of matter right there are total five states of matter not three so what are the two another states of matter there is plasma and both instant condensate let us understand from beginning states of matter there are five states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Moreover, we are having plasma and both unstrain condensate. Solids are the, are the mat, uh, solids are the things that are having very tightly packed molecules. Liquids, we know they are having moderate molecules. Gases, the molecules of the gas or the particles, they are away from each other. Now, what is plasma and BEC? Plasma is super hot material or substance that is mostly found around the sun. Around the aura of the sun, this plasma is found because it is the super hot material. BEC. It is the super cold material. These two are almost different from each other and opposite from each other. Plasma, it is extremely hot that we can't go even near it. And the temperature over there is, is calm in billions and trillions Celsius. And both instant condensate is, is always minus degree Celsius. Now we are having this slide for about difference between states. What is difference between solids, liquids and gases? Right now we don't have plasma and BEC. I am just giving you the brief idea about it. Solids. The molecules of solids are tightly packed as I told you. The molecules of liquid are moderately packed because we can dip our hand in it and even in the previous image, we saw this, that the molecules are not that much closely packed. Even in gas, the molecules are loosely packed. They are totally away from each other. Solids are having less intermolecular space. Liquids are having moderate intermolecular space. Gases are having much more intermolecular space. Intermolecular space means the space between molecules. Highly, sorry, high intermolecular attraction is found in solids because as we know, this particular box or this particular thing, it is having molecules in it. And the molecules are tightly packed because they are having a high force of attraction. 
Liquids are having moderate intermolecular attraction and gases are having less intermolecular attraction. That's why gas is not solid. Anything that is having high, that is solid. Anything that is having low, that is gas. Alright? Solid, we know. Solid is almost, of course, having a definite shape that we can't compress it and change the shape. Okay? And exceptions are there like similarly we are having, we are having clay. They are the exceptions. Though they are solid, we can compress it and they are not having definite shapes. Okay? Liquids, of course, they are not having definite shape, right? If we fill liquid in any container, it will take that shape. It, it will take the shape of container. So thus, we can't say that liquids are having space, fixed shape. Gases, they are not having a fixed shape. They are not having a fixed shape. They are solids, they have negligible compressibility. As you can see, I can't compress it. Liquids, moderate compressibility. And gases, high compressible, highly compressible. Solids are having a fixed volume. Okay, volume, volume is fixed. Liquids are having fixed volume also. For example, if I'm having one, I'm having this bottle. And if I want to fill a but, uh, if you, if I want to fill a particular amount of water in it, then uh, let's say this is for, like this bottle is maybe I don't know how much ml it is, but let's uh, let's say it is uh, one uh, one okay let's say it is it is having the capacity of one twenty ml. So so if I fill this much water, so you can see that the Volume of water will remain same. It won't change, right? If it is half a liter, then the what the amount of volume will not change at all. Okay. Next, we are having gas. It is not having fixed volume. Kinetic energy. What does kinetic energy mean? Kinetic energy means it is the energy which is created when the molecules or anything that is continuously moving. Okay. Like kinetic energy, the flow of water is having high kinetic energy as compared to the steady water in pond or lakes. River water is having more kinetic energy as compared to lakes, ponds and all. Okay. So solids are of course having less kinetic energy because we know the molecules which are there in this particular thing, they are not moving at all. Means they are moving but not that much to create energy. And the water... If I do water like this, so it is what I can say it is having a moderate energy and gas is having high kinetic energy as well. Density, solids are having high density. Liquids are having less density than solid but more than gases. And gases are having less density. Mass of solid is definite, finite. Mass of liquid is also finite. And gas is of course finite. Mass is means particles. Particles are not changing. They are small, they will remain same. Matter can change its shape. How? Let's see. So here you can see this particular thing, particular chart. What do you understand from this? A very simple thing. You see solid, liquid and gas. Gas is converted into solid to the process of deposition. Solid is changed into liquids through the process of through the process of solidification. Through the pro solid is sorry wait a minute. Let's solve it once again. Gases into solid deposition, solid into liquid melting and liquid into gas through evaporation. Solid to gas sublimation, gas to liquid condensation and liquid to solid is freezing. Okay, now let us understand about it. Now solid, if I take ice, well, if I want to convert the ice into, if I want to convert ice into liquid, then what I need to do? I need to melt it. Okay. So this process is known as melting solid to liquid. Solid to liquid. Just I am giving the example right. This is ice and this is the water. So solid to liquid melting. Now liquid to gas. 
evaporation liquid to gas evaporation by giving heat this water will convert into vapors and it will move around now liquid to gas again gas to liquid now what i need to do gas sorry solid to liquid liquid to gas gas to solid again i need to do the process of sublimation sublimation is nothing but it is a process in which the gaseous thing is converted into solid thing now how do i convert uh, the vapor into ice again or the small crystals i need to give the temperature to it and the temperature should be in minus if i give minus temperature to vapors they will be converted into solid that is ice understood about this process now next solid to gas now this is solid directly gas you know camphor camphor is directly converted into solid to gas uh, by heating and when we heat camphor it vaporizes okay and this process is known as sublimation both the processes of converting liquid to gas sorry solid to gas and gas to solid are known as sublimation now gas to liquid gas to liquid remember we learned in uh, in, in class 5 we learned about condensation condensation is the process in which the gas is converted into water okay uh, and liquid to solid that is solidification or freezing if i'm having water and if i freeze this then this will convert this will be converted into solids okay and this is known as the process freezing or solidification and this is what we learned in this particular thing let's see it once more steam deposition ice deposition and sublimation both are same and sublimation deposition are same condensation and freezing you need to remember this chart because it might come in our exams next we are having the uh, the last topic about converting of units converting the units so how to convert celsius into kelvin to convert celsius into kelvin we just need to do or follow some steps so celsius into kelvin so see here uh, 30 degree celsius is given to us and we need to convert it into kelvin means 30 degree celsius means how many how many how much kelvin okay this kelvin is the this kelvin is the standard unit of temperature okay but we often use celsius or fahrenheit but kelvin is the standard one okay so the formula to change celsius into kelvin is celsius degree celsius plus 273.15 it is not necessary to write 15 all the times you can neglect this 1.5 if it, it is okay if you didn't wrote this it is okay because Though a one point five is there, but we do not try it. So thirty degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So what we need to do? Thirty degrees Celsius. We wrote thirty degree, and then we have to add not thirty degree. We wrote thirty, and we have to add two seventy three to it. Just a simple math. Just a simple math. Okay, thirty plus two seventy three is three hundred and three. So thirty degree Celsius means. Three hundred and three Kelvin, and you can see here that the degree symbol is not used. Okay, so this is the formula to change Celsius into Kelvin. Just remember it. If you want to convert it, then we have to add. Okay, and just oppose it. Just oppose it to this. How to convert Kelvin into Celsius? Then just subtract two seventy three from the given Kelvin. Now here, uh, this third three hundred Kelvin is given, and we have to convert it into Celsius. And how to convert? Three hundred minus two seventy three. That is twenty six point eight five. Around twenty seven, right? So remember this. Okay. One more note. 
note is given to you. Remember, Celsius tem uh, remember Celsius temperatures have a degree symbol, but Kelvin are not having degree symbols. Hope you like this presentation presented by me. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. And yeah, follow for more and subscribe, do subscribe and I'll be coming with more chapters like this. Thank you.